So the application I use for creating trips uh, and ride outs for my uh, Zoom OX is I use the website MyRoute app. Now in MyRoute app you simply say new route and that will uh, give you the opportunity to name the route. We'll call this trip planning for Zoom OXT. Okay. And we can change the base maps here. Uh, it does recommend the here map for Garmin, but I actually find the OpenStreetMap or OSM, as some people call it, uh, actually works more reliably, and it works 100% reliably with the Beeline and also with uh, BMW Connected. So if you have a few friends that have different solutions for their navigation and you want to share a GPX file. Uh, I usually find OpenStreetMap is the most consistent and best amongst them. Now, to make it easier on the eyes, with this overlay map, I usually select Google Maps as the default, which will show more kind of points of interest and, um, uh, you know, such as gas stations and whatnot on the maps. Now, one way you can kind of create uh, routes fairly quickly is via favorites. And so if we want to uh, create a favorite, let's say, uh, let's say this seven acre barn grill here. I've eaten there before, quite a nice place. If we wanted to make this a favorite, we can actually click specifically somewhere on the map. I'm gonna click just here, cause we like to park just out front. I can actually switch to a satellite view if I want to see where we park. We normally park in that row there where there's uh, room for bikes. So if I switch back to Google Maps view, uh, I can click on here just at this point, and we can call this seven acre barn grill. Okay, and now when I click on that, I can go into more information and I can add this to favorites. Boom, done. Now, if I delete that, what I can now do is begin to create a route based on the favorites. So if I open this and open this and go to my list of favorites, there's all sorts of things happening in here. So I can say I want to start uh, in Georgia 400 Junction 7 northbound and I click on that and I say add that. Yes, please. Uh, next, I'm going to um, go over to Barrel House Coffee and Ball Ground, have a cup of coffee, thank you. And next, we're going to go to the Seven Acre Barn and Grill, which we've just created there, and say, click, done. Oof. And next, we'll maybe go up to, say, Circle K in Dawsonville, Add that, and now we'll go down to say uh, up to two wheels of such is a very well known biking point. Done. Now, if I move that out of the way, you can see how quick and easy it was to create a route. And I can see that um, perhaps I want to resequence two and three. So I can actually look at my uh, waypoints to do that. If I switch to waypoints, I can actually say, actually I'm gonna do it in that order. I'm gonna go to lunch first, we'll have a coffee in the afternoon, and then we'll go up to Dawsonville, get some gas maybe, and then up to Suches to talk uh, BS with the biking guys, okay? So now we've got an instant route very, very quick and very, very specific to specific key points. Now, in terms of uh, these via points, as Garmin would call it, showing up on your Garmin on the top of the screen, uh, so you know where to stop, you have to make these uh, a via point. And my route app will actually do this for you. You can click on here and say this is now a via point. And I like to, uh, I like to change this into capitals so that it really stands out 
um, at the top of your Garmin Zumo uh, when you get close to it. So I'm going to say stop, seven acre barn grill. Dum. I'm going to change its color as well. Um, via point, that's the wrong thing, color. Now if I right click here, it will go to the next stop. And I can do the same again. I'm going to change that to a via. I'm going to change the waypoint color and I'm going to rename it and <clears throat> I'm just actually going to add the word stop because I already put the favorites in uh, in uppercase for that one and the same for the next one a via change the color rename it or add the word stop before it and this one here is a it change its color and it's actually the end point so it won't give me a um, <coughs> option to make it a via because it's the end point but it will still display on the Garmin and I can say stop uh, two wheels of such as there we go so we've got our route nicely laid out but we might want to of course go uh, via some interesting roads so say we want to, uh, this that's a nice twisty road here. Uh, so let's say we want to go there, just as you would in Google Maps. You can drag and drop the route. So you would change that and we'll say, uh, let's go to here. Okay, so now we've got a couple of waypoints. The via points are hard stops, places we want to stop, uh, and the waypoints are, or the shaping points, uh, help shape the way. So Garmin thinks of it in terms of, uh, and my route app thinks of it in terms of um, route deviations or telling the route you want to take perhaps a more interesting road rather than the most direct route. Um, that would be a shaping point and the hard stops are vias or waypoints okay so that's all well and good but how do we know that that is going to work well well there's a couple of things we do first we go to the first waypoint in the list or the first the starting point and we zoom in a hundred percent that's vitally important uh, often when you do that you'll find that your marker is off the road somewhere here and when you go past it your GPS will be telling you to do a U-turn and that's the problem so what I do is I have the default map of OpenStreetMap on I then switch the overlay map to um, to OpenStreetMap okay so now if I zoom out you'll see this whole map has changed it's not so easy on the eyes anymore and it's harder to see where the gas stations are and that kind of thing but it is the appropriate map for um, the GPX that I want to create but in addition to that in the toolkit here I can compare it with a different map and the here is typically thought of as compatible for the Garmin so I'm going to select that as an overlay so now I'm looking at the OpenStreetMap base map and in the toolkit I've got to compare with the here overlay. So the first thing I'm going to do now is um, drag my start point to the center of the road and uh, that'll be good. I can do confirm and it will just take this default um, description in there or if I do cancel it will still keep the waypoint to where I've dragged it, but it will keep the original wording, which over here uh, may be difficult to see, but it says 400 junction 7 northbound. So I'll do cancel, and it's retained that 400 junction 7 northbound for that particular point. And if I hover my mouse over it, you can see that. Now if I click on it and right click, it's going to take me to my next waypoint, and that kind of looks good in terms of it being in the center of the road but you'll notice the black line 
which is the open street map um, line of where it thinks it goes and then the grey line which is the Garmin here overlay uh, are slightly lower so I'm just going to move that slightly lower so it's on the lines and I'm going to say cancel because I want to keep the description okay now if I click on it again it says seven acre barn grill still if I right click I'm now looking at here um, so this is a shaping point so this is if you remember this is where we dragged and dropped uh, the route off this road to here and when I click on it and I zoom in we can see we're a million miles out from the road and what you're really looking for here is not just to drag the shaping point back onto the road but you're looking to compare the darker line which is the open street map overlay and the lighter grey line which is the here overlay and you want to choose a part of the road where both of those are in agreement and preferably they are in the centre of the road as shown on the map so you might have to zoom along a little bit like so they're overlaid there which is good but it's still not that centred in the middle of the road that would be the centre so it's a little bit over to the side but they do at least agree at that point and so what you'd be looking for is something like this this is really good where they both agree we've got the uh, OSM line and the uh, here line overlapping at this point and it also happens to be the center of the road and that would be perfect so I'm gonna, just going to drag and drop a new shaping point specifically right to that spot okay and I can just readjust it if I really feel like it just to be certain I'm going to put it actually just slightly further up there you can see how clean uh, that is I think I'm going to move it slightly back actually there we go so you see how clean that is now both lines agree and they both happen to be in the center of the road so that's really where I want my waypoint and if I go back to the previous waypoint my kind of pilot waypoint if you like I can just get rid of that now because that's no good at that point so that now is a good waypoint or a good shaping point I should say I click on that I get to my next point which is a, a stop point I'm just going to readjust it very slightly just to just for peace of mind and it really does pay you to have patience and be pedantic in how specific you place these points because this is the make or break situation for uh, whether your route works well or not. So here we've got uh, the, the overlays. You can see here where it's kind of way off for the here map and the black line is open street map but they both agree here and we want to stop at this gas station here so I'm just going to drag that again to the specific point I want in the road I'm going to hit cancel because I want to retain the descriptor stop and let's go to the next uh, shaping point and this is uh, way off as you can see and this is the value really of uh, zooming in you know you, you look at it like this and you think oh it's okay no you have to zoom in 100% whatever software you're using to let you do this now just because it's easier on the eyes I'm just going to drag it back to the main road to begin with but you can see here the open street map is nicely centered in the road on the map but here it does not agree with it however in this section there's a reasonable amount where both overlay each other and it's in the center of the road so I'm going to drag my shaping point to the very center part of that and say done and that's good and now I go to my final point which is uh, two wheels here now because this is a final point I don't really have uh, too much leeway in terms of where I can or can't put my uh, my flag it's actually going to be here at that point um, and this is going to be a little bit it's spot on for the open street map 
it's a little bit out for the here map but it is the end point so the route will just end there anyway uh, and that will be good so now I zoom out and I just want to do a final check so I make sure I've got my open street map on I make sure I've got my open street map overlay on again my toolkit I make sure I've got my compare with here on for my uh, Garmin I'm going to go back to the first waypoint in list I'm going to zoom in and that looks good I'm going to go to the next one and that looks good I'm going to go to the next one that looks good I'm going to go to the next one yeah that's good go to the next one that's good in fact I want to go back to the previous one because I think I've spotted a problem here you see how this grey line continues here that means the here map and the open street map disagree this this is uh, this is going to create a problem on your Garmin so if you're using something like a beeline you'll probably want to follow the open street map if you've got friends with a BMW um, using the connected suite it'll want to follow this if you've got friends with a Garmin it'll want to approach this destination from a different direction so we'll have to see why that is out and if I switch to Google Maps it's actually when not approaching it but when we leave it so the Garmin recognizes from this point here to this point here it's quicker to go this route however OpenStreetMaps thinks it's quicker to go that route so I need to make my mind up which is uh, the best route to follow in other words what I need is to put in an additional shaping point between this point where I leave this uh, stop and this point where the open street map at the top and the Garmin down below disagree now I think I prefer this road it's a nice road up here and so I'm going to put in an additional shaping point up here and what you'll see is that the Garmin will then be forced to agree that this is the best route to continue rather than think this route down here is quickest so let's just put in at this high level so you can see it as soon as I put in the shaping point you're going to see that grey line down below disappear see gone so now both open street map and the here overlay here agree this is the best route and we know this shaping point is going to be off so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to zoom in and we can see just how far it's off and I drag it to the main road just so it's easier on the eyes and say OK and now we need to do the same as the other areas we need to look for something like that that's perfect right in the center of the road where both the OSM and here maps agree and I can either drag that waypoint down there or I can create a new one and delete that waypoint 5 I think I'll just drag it down there and then we'll, re we'll readjust it once there so I've done that I click on it I zoom in I then choose my point in the road where I think it's optimized in terms of the maps agreeing and it being the center of the road and I'm good to go all right let's just uh, finish off again that looks good zoomed in at 100% always zoom in at 100% the next uh, shaping point looks good that's in the center of the road the maps agree and there's my final destination so in terms of planning uh, I've used lots and lots of online tools uh, and I've used about 15 um, phone apps and many many uh, website apps uh, from Scenic to Kanimoto to you know the Honda Planner, the Harley Planners and so forth and so forth. This I find by far uh, the best planning application. Okay, and I, would, I have a lifetime uh, subscription to them or membership. 
I'm in no way affiliated with them. They don't pay me to, to say that I like their product, but I really do. I think this is uh, perfect for route planning. So how do you get that onto your Garmin? It's pretty simple actually. The first thing you do is you do a save as and just click on this top one, GPX 1.1 route track POI. Click on that. And if you're on a Mac, that will instantly download to your downloads folder. And in Finder, under your Downloads folder, you will find the downloaded GPX. You can simply right click on that and select Share and AirDrop. And then when you open your phone, you will see your phone appear in the AirDrop. You can click on that. Okay, you will see a list on your phone of compatible applications and the one you want to select is Drive and then you turn your Garmin Zumo XT on and you press send in the Drive app and then when you turn on your Garmin you click on agree and uh, you go into apps you go into your trip planner and you go into save trips and if it hasn't already automatically synced, you go into tools. Uh, there we go. Save an item one of one to trip planner. New tracks were received, new trip added to the trip planner. So now from your main menu, you can go into apps. Uh, if you hold your finger on these, you can actually drag and drop them where you want. And it's good to put the trip planner in the top left hand side, particularly if you're right-handed or the top right-hand side if you're left-handed and when you go to the trip planner now you can go into saved trips and you will see the trip planning for Zumo XT route that we just created and when I open that you'll see that the via points the stops uh, actually have a flag next to them and the shaping points do not so when you get close to say Circle K in Dawsonville um, you won't be alerted of this Marble Hill shaping point it won't say anything on the Garmin it'll just keep directing you to towards this Circle K in Dawsonville but as you get close to the Circle K in Dawsonville at the top of the screen it will actually show um, it will actually show stop Circle K Dawsonville now you can make any of these uh, a stopping point and it will just recalculate or you can make it a shaping point. Okay, so now it's a shaping point again. So from the start of the route uh, where we join the northbound carriageway, we progress on to Seven Acre Barn and stop. We go past East Cherokee Drive, we stop at Barrel House, we drive past Marble Hill, there's a stop in Circle K Dawsonville. We continue on Dawsonville Highway and then we stop at Two Wheels of Suches. So that is how that works. And if you go into your settings here, you can change your route preference. I would keep it shortest distance and you can uh, basically view turns and delete and rename uh, the, the, the route, etc. You can also edit the schedule. So you can go to schedule, you can go into your start point and you can say, I want to begin the route at 8 a.m. for instance. And that will have you arriving at 8.25 at the Seven Acre Grill for breakfast perhaps. If you say next, how long will you stay? Let's say 30 minutes. Done. And now you see that it will have you leaving at 8 a.m., arriving at Seven Acre Barn at 8.25, stopping for half an hour and departing at 8.55, which will then see you at your next destination at 9.21. Then you can just simply save that. If we look at the map, we can see that it is the route that we, we planned. Uh, hopefully you can remember it, but 
It's got a nice little flag by everywhere we're stopping. Seven Acre Barn, that is Barrel House, that is Circle K in Dawsonville, and that is our end destination, uh, such as. If I come back out, I can just say go. Now I can either start my journey just by going to the closest entry point of the route, or I can say, no, I wanna to go to the very beginning, or I could choose one of the stops along the way as my first destination. So if my route gets stuffed up, I can always go to my next destination and say, okay. But we'll just go from the very start and it'll give me the route. And I can say start. <coughs> and we are good to go. Uh, along here, it will show the time, the distance, how many stops. I can actually go into here and say I want my music player on. Okay, and control my music via here. I can click on here for stats about the, the journey and distance and stuff, and I can reset these at any time for any, uh, any journey. Let's just do a select tool, and that will uh, reset my trips. And that's got a wealth of information in it. And over here, I can also uh, adjust my timings. And so as simple as that, basically, uh, I know a lot of you have um, problems planning your routes and uh, tearing your hair out with your GPS. Um, principles are the same really for any GPS and any mapping software. Uh, the key thing is to zoom in on the, the waypoints or shaping points, whatever you prefer to call them uh, 100% and make sure that uh, your flag is definitely in the center of your lane and that your map, either as a base map or an overlay map, um, agrees with where you put that shaping point, else move it. And in terms of the Garmin Zumo XT specifically, uh, for the places that you want as a hard stop, uh, change the icon to uh, a via and put all the uh, the wording of that destination in uppercase. I like to change the color as well, just because it stands out on the map itself when planning. You can quickly see which are your shaping points and which are your stopping points. And um, with the Mac particularly, it couldn't be simpler just to uh, save as that GPX 1.1. It'll automatically download to your downloads folder. Just right click on it, airdrop it to your iPhone. And if you've got the Garmin Drive app installed, it'll come up in list. You select drive, open your Garmin, and it will just automatically sync. And you'll be able to open it just by simply going into, uh, from the main menu, apps, trip planner, and you'll see your file name there. You select it and press go. Simple as that. Uh, if you've got a, uh, if you've got a Garmin Zumo XT and you've been having problems, please try and follow this video and let me know whether you were successful and how you got on. Right often, right careful, right on. Hey you, if you want to become one of the right on people, don't forget to subscribe. Right often, right carefully, right on.